Most bankers aren't ready to help you until after their third cup of coffee. But with Central National Bank's after-hours service, you don't have to wait for the bank lobby to open to get help. You can contact us from 6 to 8.30 in the morning or from 5 to 10 in the evening, and we'll connect you to a real, live, local person who can answer questions and fix problems seven days a week. Bank different. Bank central. Central National Bank. Member FDIC. This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. Welcome to Whoa, Whoa. King of the Hill podcast. I'm Mike. And I'm Rusty. Rusty, we got a lot going on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we we started, then we stopped, then we started. Uh, and then we stopped, and then I, we started it, again. And, and we missed a great joke, because you were eating a gummy bear. It was orange, and I said, look on the back of the bag, see what flavor it is, and you said... Orange. There you go. That's a good joke. orange gummy bear. And then and Mason, producer Mason, comes in, and he goes, uh, you got to come see this. And so I went and looked, and... We're on the 21st floor of this building, and uh, one of the windows is leaking. Not great. Um, and then also, this morning before we got here, apparently Mason had an issue in the elevator, um, meaning... Not a medical kinda, issue. No. Uh, it was mechanical. It feels like the yeah, elevator kind of dropped. The elevator kind of dropped on him. And he told me about it, and I was like, well, thank you for letting me know, because that was my favorite elevator. Well, <laughs> I'm just saying that... Uh, Mason's not the guy to do that to. He, uh, um, I, I feel really bad for him. He got off on 17. He called me, and, oh, boy, he didn't sound great. And so, no, he's not a fan of heights. No, not a fan of heights. And so yeah, when, when the thing that gets you to the heights has problems, that's, that's a real issue. It's uh, a big issue, yeah. It is a big issue. Okay, so uh, we are at Season 5, Episode 19. Yes, oh, we are, oh. which is the – Penultimate. It is a penultimate. The yeah. penultimate. I learned that some seasons ago. Yeah. From Mike here. The, the episode penultimate the episode mm-hmm. of season five. So here we go. Uh, Hank's backstory. In the year of our Lord, 5 ABE 17. So this one actually, the way it was filmed originally, was before the last episode we did. Yeah. Yeah. Before the last one. It's kind of crazy. Uh, I would love for. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. King of the Hill to come on and uh, tell us all about that. And uh, when I say K- Mr. King of the Hill, I mean Mike Judge or anybody who worked in that department that would yeah. that would cause that or have to keep up with it or something. I'd love to talk to somebody who was in charge of like the show Bible. You know, it'd like, be like Wes Archer. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like keeping, he's probably a part of that. Yeah. Keeping all the connections and knowing the characters did this and that and you know and all that kind of stuff. I, well, I he wasn't the storyboard. He was the art director. But I imagine art direction, storyboard direction, they oh, all yeah. kind of work in the same room. I would think so. And I, I, I just find it fascinating. You know, I just think it would be fun to talk about that, about no, how, I agree. It, how it works. So uh, the gauntlet has been thrown, Mr. Judge and Mr. Archer. Uh, all right. So we start this sucker with no bell, no yell. Well, uh, I've, I've only talked to one of those two. You talked to Archer? Uh, I've talked to Wes Archer. Yeah. Yeah, he's hard to get on because of everything that's going on. That's the thing is, is that we started this show at a great time, uh-huh. but we also started it at, at the worst time at, to at try to a talk rough to time <laughs> yeah. to talk to anybody yeah. that's part of the production of the show because they literally can't talk about it till the show airs. Oh, that's true. That's true. So that's... we're pretty much in an NDA gridlock with like multiple, like a handful of people that want to come on the show, but can't Wes Archer doesn't even answer me anymore NDA grid hopefully he answers me one day but there you go he doesn't answer me anymore well he's probably pretty busy 
Or he's tired of me asking, that could hey, be you want to be on my yeah. podcast? I was, I, was trying to, I was trying to be nice, but uh, yeah. Maybe. Well, I mean, I asked him for a little while, and he gave you know, me an answer, and we, we kind of talked about the answer, and then I gave him an answer to one of his questions, and then he never answered me again. Well, so. I mean, the thing is, there's there's no harm, no foul. I mean, it's not like you're saying, God damn it, Wes Archer, you he better be on it, my though. show or anything, you know? Well, yeah, the thing is, yeah. is that I get nah, the receipt just, that he looked actually I, at least looks at it. I so. can't imagine how many people reach out to these guys daily, if not hourly. You know, especially yeah. now that they've got all this crap going on. Uh, now they're rebooting the office and all this. Oof. That whole place is busy. Yeah, they're busy, busy, busy. busy. They're busy in general, yeah, even without King of the Hill or the Good office. Good for them, reboot. though. Good for them. Uh, okay, so we start with three in the alley, uh, that being Hank, Boomhauer, and uh, Bill. Dale drives up on his riding lawnmower. Of course, he has a big white helmet on. Uh, on the side of the thing, it says uh, 5,000 Dale's dead bug. Uh, and, uh, and before they, before he comes up, uh, they're just making small talk in the alley and Bill's like, mail came a little early yesterday. He goes, yeah, Peggy was telling me. I mean, what a conversation. What a riveting, yeah, that's a riveting, riveting conversation. conversation. Uh, anyway, Dale drives up here. Gentlemen, you're looking at the next winner of the first annual Durndal County Mower Races stock class. Hank says, mower races? Well, good for Durndal. Uh, and he says... Me and my Mason 5000 will do 20 laps around the track at speeds approaching. I've chosen you. Speeds approaching. I don't know what he said. Uh, I've chosen you three to be my pit crew. I think he said like 12 miles an hour. Yeah. Uh, but it's not in the it's not in the thing here. I should have written that down. It's my fault. Uh, Hank says, pit crew? Stuff that, mister. If there's organized mower racing, I'm in. Bill says, me too. Uh, and, and, of course, <laughs> boom, hour. Finally, my dust gribble. I mean. That is that's the the yeah. most um, legible sentence I've he- heard him say in quite a while. Well, I'm going to go ahead and break down the my uh, dust <laughs> sport of lawnmower racing. Yeah, let's do it. So, quick breakdown. And it uh, is a sport. It is a sport because it it's is, on ESPN, uh, so it's classified as sport. Yeah, it's on ESPN. <laughs> they they have, they air it on ESPN. Uh, there's a, a few major races they do. It's actually a whole professional sport. Uh, so. The average speed of a competitive mower is uh, 30 to 60 miles per hour. So that's pretty fast. Think about being on your ride mower in your yard and yeah, no you're kidding. ripping the block at like 60 mile an hour. So <laughs> uh, you've got uh, the so to be a driver, you have to be affiliated. Uh, you have to be a member of the United States Lawnmower Racing Association or a part of a sanctioned affiliated club. Uh, drivers must be between the ages of. Uh, Eight to 17 years may race with parental permission or drivers above 18 years of age. All drivers must sign a release. No mowers could have blades on them. All non-stock mowers must be equipped with automatic throttle closing devices. All mowers must be equipped with engine cutoff safety switches. Mower brakes must be in good condition and operate on at least two wheels. Fuel must be pump gas. The only additive allowed is stay bill fuel stabilizer. Yeah. Every driver must wear automobile racing or motorcycle type safety helmet. Fuel stabilizer doesn't taste as good as you would think. Either. Uh, probably not at all. Uh, I, I'm not sure that I would eat it. Uh, every driver shall wear long pants, long sleeve shirt, gloves, oh, proper yeah. shoes on track. Yeah. It is mandatory that all drivers wear an approved for racing neck support. So there you go. There's that. Did you know that and Jim then, Gavin? Uh, Started uh, lawnmower racing back in 1973. No, I didn't know that. And he was an Irishman. Oh, an Irishman started it. Yeah, I guess anything with a w- anything with a motor is going to be uh, uh, figured out how to race it. There was a there's a specific type of tractor. It's like a hand tractor. It's almost like a kind of almost looks like a, a rotor tiller kind of device. Oh yeah, but it's not a rotor tiller. It's made you ever specifically run a for yeah. I've ran a rotor tiller. Yeah. It sucks. Uh, the only thing worse than a rotor tiller is a post hole digger. And I think the only thing worse than a post hole digger is uh, jackhammer and concrete. Jack- so uh, well, I had go, to, go ahead and finish the lawnmower thing, yeah, and then yeah. I, I want to talk to you about jackhammer and concrete. I got a good one, too, for that. Riveting. Uh, so there's five mower classifications of race. You've got stock, which is as delivered from factory with blades removed. So it's just you take the blades off and you run it. That's stock. And then you got the JP class, which is for kids 10 to 15. You've got the International Mowers of Weeds, which is front engine, highly regulated. 
And then you've got prepared class, which is prepared, modified, drivetrain, engine, all that other stuff. And then you've got the FX class, which is the fastest class with all the major modifications and stuff that you're allowed. So yep. go ahead and tell us your jackhammer story here. So jackhammer story. Uh, well, hang on. I got a, I got a quick fact for you. Uh, Bobby Cleveland. Uh, is one of the most decorated lawnmower racing champions in the history of STA-BIL National Lawnmower Racing Series. Okay. He's won more than 75 first-place victories and taken nine STA-BIL Series National Championships. So yeah. congratulations, Bobby Cleveland. Uh, so – Well, hold on. Hold on. Uh, yeah. Before you go into that, go for uh, while I was looking at these racing things, mm -hmm. like I say, it was kind of like a uh, – uh, a rotor tiller kind of thing, but it's not a rotor tiller. It doesn't have the blades or nothing. It's like a tractor, but it's specifically it's like a stand on tractor made for rice fields. And in my you're talking lawnmower, uh, lawnmower like kind of it, it's kind of it's kind of like a lawnmower, but it's not. I'll have to show you a video of it later. But it's uh they do it in Thailand, and they uh, in Thailand anything with a motor is known to be modified and raced there as well. That's a, a common thing. Thailand does a lot of that stuff so uh they go out in these rice fields that are already you know done uh for the season and they drag these tractors they soup up these tractors oh, wow. and then they just drag them down the down the rice fields holy <laughs> crap so. well you, the only thing i can think too is like the the riding lawnmower where the guys stand up and do the big swaths you know like they're they're just they're riding on it like this you know and they're just they're standing up the whole time but you had mentioned uh, post hole diggers and uh, yeah, concrete. Yeah, yeah. Um, when I had, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what they look like. Yeah, a rice he showed tractor. me a picture of a rice tractor. And wow! They, and they soup them up and they drag them. Well, see, that's There's more of ass. like a race race, you know? Lawnmowers. Yeah, that's a fun race. Eesh, that's a fun you know? race. Uh, anyway, well, it's like stock well, cars for lawnmowers, though. You go around right. an oval I guess, track, I guess you're right. yeah, yeah, left yeah. turns. Uh, when uh, when I had my uh, my little video store out in Robinson, Texas. Yep. Uh, known as Rocket Video. Um, we had to put a uh, one of those big flashing arrow signs up where we could put the name of the titles that were coming out yeah. this yeah. this week or whatever, right? And it kept moving. Like the wind would come through and move it or, you know, something would happen or whatever. And so what we decided to do was put it in the ground. That way it never goes anywhere. So me and my infinite wisdom, I bring a... Uh, manual post hole digger mm. to a concrete fight and yeah, you uh lost that one yeah i did um i made a hole wasn't great hole but i made a hole made a hole for after sure after hours and hours and you're probably wore out you and probably then, wore the machine out <laughs> well and then i'm then i'm wondering um you know what happened to my back well i it's, it's about 16 hours of the post hole digger in concrete that'll so do it yeah it was asphalt it wasn't necessarily concrete but it was asphalt laid on top of concrete that's so terrible. Like, yeah, it was rough. You get through the asphalt and you think you've done something, and then you go, "Oh shit, here's the concrete." I did a, uh, I did a season of plumbing, as a plumbing apprentice for, uh, probably a good year. Yeah, when well, I was like seventeen, eighteen, right after I graduated high school, and uh, we had to go to this older building. Yeah, and it was like a shop building, but we had to fix some of their water stuff and like update some of their some of their water, uh, some of their sewer and mm -hmm. water pipes on the inside. But the shitty part about where their water was is there was a concrete slab that was like three feet thick. Mm -hmm. I spent mm -hmm. a full day of work. Three feet thick of concrete. I just I spent a full day of work. And I could only do it for like thirty minutes at a time, and then I had to oh. stop for like five or ten minutes. I don't doubt that. Yeah. But I jackhammered for like eight and a half hours, nine hours, and when I was done, my whole upper body <laughs> just felt numb yeah. from it's vibrating. Been shaking and vibrating, it's been vibrating so much. Yeah. Like, uh, like the next day when I went to work, <laughs> I was like, I'm so glad that we got all that done in one day because two days worth of concrete would have killed me. <laughs> I put in a wood floor at our house one time, and uh, uh, instead of buying the correct tool or finding the right tool, I used this little Dremel device that had a blade on it, right? And the blade's probably three inches long or something. But all it does is vibrate, basically, so that, that you can use that to cut with. Yeah. I used that to cut all the boards. After I was done with the floor, um, I had two fingers in my right hand that were numb for a year. <laughs> oh, wow. A year. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, I didn't, uh, didn't, didn't treat my arm real well. All right, so... Uh, Boomhauer says, plan on eating my dust, Gribble. 
Uh, Gribble says, fine, you're all fired from my pit crew. So, and, so unless you plan on buying Mason and not having them anonymously vandalized, plan on losing. Hank says, Dale, it's the man, not the machine, that wins races. And I'll say this to you and to you and to you, I am the man. I, mean, <laughs> I like that. That's a damn good That's a hard line. That's yeah, a I good like one that right one. There, man. I am the man. <laughs> I am the man. Uh, all right, so we're outside. Uh, we see an overview of Arlen. Uh, we see Boomhauer mowing around cones. We see Bill in the most beat up ride on lawnmower I've ever seen. Uh, he's coming around a tree, uh, uh, hit stuff. Uh, then you see Hank. He's doing his skill racing around these cones. Uh, he sees Dale, and those two are playing chicken at each other, right? Because this is this is war now, right? Mm-hmm. And so they're riding at each other, and then it backs up, and you just see them stop at the bush, you know, <laughs> they just stop at the hedge, staring at each other. Uh, uh, Hank says, "You want to back out now?" Uh, Dale says, "You mean back out of the race or back out of this position? Because I can do both, but I will only do one." <laughs> <laughs> makes no I don't sense. even know what the hell he's talking about. Uh, he blows smoke and then he tries to back up, but instead he goes forward. He mows the hedge down, and then he looks at Hank and says, "There's more where that came from. <laughs> You're gonna mow over all my hedges? Is that yeah. the threat?" All right, so now we're at the Hill House. Uh, we see Hank sleeping. His alarm clock goes off. It's 7 a.m. I would think Hank gets up earlier than that, but maybe it's a weekend. Or his back hurts. It's true. And he's just laying there like he would have got out of bed at 5, but could he be. can't. He could barely could get out of bed. There's nobody to impress have yet we, or, ha- be, or, or be stoic for. Have so. we mentioned Hank's back so far? I don't think he's had this? any back issues up until this point. I huh. think this is his first that would back be something problem. for the, the live people to tell us. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure this is his first uh, episode with a major back problem. So Hank gets out. Well, he's five years older than when the show started. Oh, it's true. So. So he starts to get out of the bed, and he goes, oh, oh, man, not my back again. Uh, And he ends up hunched over. He goes in. He finally makes it into the uh, kitchen. He's standing up at the breakfast table eating cereal and just dropping it everywhere. He's obviously in pain. Uh, And uh, Bobby and Peggy are sitting there. Bobby says, Mom, how come Dad gets to stand at the breakfast table, and I never get to wear my cape? What a question. (laughs) Yeah, what a a question that is. (laughs) Peggy says... Because your father is afraid of doctors. Now, Hank, according to my count, this is the fifth or eighth time that your back has gone out. This is your fifth or eighth. What? <laughs> Good counting, Peggy. She goes, uh, will you make an appointment already? No, my back's just stiff from training for that mower race. I spent three hours last night working on my starts. See, if I can beat Boomhauer off the line, he'll fall apart mentally. Peggy says, what is it with you and your mower races? You stubborn you're, and your stubborn code of honor. I see a doctor whenever I'm incapacitated, and it does not make me any less of a man. True. A man. <laughs> Hank says, I am not incapacitated. Enough said. And then he has a lot of back pain. Uh, okay, so now we got Hank standing at the grill. He is uh, forming raw patties out of hamburger meat. Every time he drops one, he goes, oh, like he's he's – He's in big pain, and I know this kind of pain. This pain sucks. Oh, that kind of back pain? Uh, yeah, it does. There's a few times in my life where I've, uh, I guess, like a little sciatica problem, mm-hmm. mostly a nerve problem. Never mm-hmm. had, like, really intense back pains. But uh, there's a few. There's one time where I was, when I was still working at the candy factory that I tweaked my back just a little bit, and, yeah. like, my whole leg, everything was oh, numb. Do it, it was like man. a whole like three to four days of just numbness. You get a uh, you get a real education on what your nervous system does. Yeah, because uh, my, my back, you know, when I again when I had the video stores, it would go out all the time. I would bend over without any warning, just not be able to get up for a couple of days. Yeah, um, hurt like hell. Uh, ended up getting L four L five screwed together. Oh wow, but that's twenty plus years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's not giving me any problems. My upper back and my neck now, and I had my neck done, and the doctor screwed it up and had to get it done again. So yeah, my fantastic. upper upper shoulders and stuff like that from driving oh. as much as I drive, my up like right in between my shoulder blades just none goes of this numb. shit is good for you. None of it's good for you. That's what it ends up coming down to. Yeah, it's not. But anyway, he's mashing up patties. Uh, Peggy is over there gardening. Uh, he is obviously still in pain. Bill drives up on his beat-up do, mower. How does that old song go? Uh, I sold my soul to the company, company store. store. Uh, Bill drives up on his beat-ass lawnmower and says, There, just take it. Take it all. I don't want any more junk food in my house. And he drops a whole box full of junk food on their driveway. Uh, Peggy says, Bill, are the rats back? <laughs> he says, I don't know. I'm trying to lose weight <laughs> so I have a better chance in the mower race. 
<laughs> I love the fact that he just doesn't know. Hank turns around and says, well, Bill, you could lose 100 pounds and you still wouldn't be able to take a corner like me. Oh, well. Yeah, it's, it's trash talking time. Bill says, well, I've got news for you. I could never lose 100 pounds and you haven't been practicing. Your lawn is shaggy. <laughs> I could never lose a hundred pounds, and then Hank. Getting, At least he's that self-aware. Oh, Hank, getting really pissed. You say something about my lawn, Dotree? He drops the spatula and comes over and smacks one of those hamburger patties right on Bill's head. And Bill's like, "Ooh!" Uh, now we got uh, Peggy and Hank uh, getting in the truck uh, to go somewhere, and Hank. All right, Peggy gets in. She puts her seatbelt on. She looks over at Hank. Hank is struggling just to even reach the door at this point. He's in so much pain. Um, he uh, he go. They end up going to the. Um, they end up going to the doctor. Uh, this is at the Arlen Medical Plaza. Uh, the doctor comes in and says, "Thank you, Gina." Uh, she says, "Doctor Tate." I don't know what it is with that interaction between those two, but it's repeated again at the end of the show. He says, thank you, Gina. She goes, Dr. Tate. I can only assume that they are assuming that there's some sort of sexual <laughs> relationship yeah, between it so- these it, so- it sounds like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of innuendo. He goes, uh, the doctor says, yes, uh, Mr. Hill, you have a compression of the discs in your lower back. Uh, do you get a lot of the, uh, this in your pa- – or Hank says, do you get a lot of this in your patients who race mowers? The doctor says, a lawnmower didn't cause this. It's genetic. Peggy, of course, not knowing what genetic means, she says, genetic is in fatal. No, idiot. Uh, the doctor says, no, uh, Mr. Hill, you were born with no muscle mass here, no cushioning. He's pointing at x-rays. He goes, for years, yeah. you've been basically sitting on your spine. You suffer from a disease called diminished gluteal syndrome, or DGS. Which uh, we got a little facts on that here from uh, Artie. So yeah. uh, the name diminished gluteal syndrome is actually fictional. There <laughs> are a couple of... Uh, Diseases that kind of have similar descriptions. You have deep gluteal syndrome. Okay. You have piriformis syndrome or piriformis. Piri, P-I-R-I formis, piriformis. F-O-R-M-I. Piri, piriformis syndrome, and then uh, which most likely, based on the description that Hanks gives, he probably has the piriformis syndrome. And there's also dead butt syndrome. Dead butt syndrome. And. Uh, I don't know the accuracy of this, but there is apparently no ass prosthesis. There is no prosthesis, uh, prosthetic cheeks. Uh, I, I, I would, I would argue, I would argue that um, potentially. I don't, I don't believe that there's not. I think you're just shopping at the wrong store. There has to be some type of pro- pro- prosthetic. I'm about to look this up. Let's see. Prosthetic. So dead butt syndrome is a condition that affects Jeez. the gluteus maximus muscle. It is characterized by a lack of muscle tone and strength in the buttocks. The condition can be caused by prolonged sitting, which leads to decreased blood flow to the muscles. Well, actually, uh, there is some prosthetic butt cheeks here. So there are, yeah. Uh, you can. Y- y- Most y- of them are just costume accessories, so sure, not sure. not medical accessories. Worn at a lot of award ceremonies, I would imagine. But there are augmentations for the buttocks area. Oh. Sure. Uh, you've got fat grafting, butt implants, and well, a buttocks lift. We have a show here that has a lot of, um, I'm going to say, original characters that come in to be uh, interviewed. Yeah. And I have learned more about uh, Brazilian butt lifts than I ever wanted to know. I, I didn't really want to know anything about them, to be honest with you. Uh, <laughs> when you I come in and say I had a BBL, I think something completely different. Well, I, I, I just think it's... Uh, I guess I don't really have anything wrong with body augmentation. Sure. It's just uh, the the harmful ways that people do stuff to themselves like that. Like yeah. it's all right if you go to a professional and they do everything professionally and they remove fat from one area and they put it in your butt instead and all that. That's cool. But there's a, a video that I was watching from a, a, a doctor that does stuff out in Hollywood, mm. and uh, he was showing people. The reason why, because somebody was complaining about the cost of his services, yeah. and he explained why he's expensive. And he showed people, uh, he called it a specimen, but it was pretty much just a hunk of a dead person's ass who Wonderful. had died from uh, a horrible silicone infection. So he was sitting there oh, going, and he was that. showing what it does internally to your skin yeah. and how the silicone, like, busts and leaks inside of your body and oh, like see that in a few it's minutes. disgusting yeah it's yeah. just terrible um yeah i don't really understand it 
Uh, I understand. Um, so I understand boob jobs and things like that for reconstruction. So like if you've had cancer or whatever, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. Um, if you've had an enormous weight loss or something, I get it. You got to get things taken care of. Um, just going in to get your boobs bigger seems like, I, I don't know. It just seems very, very unnecessary. Yeah, unnecessary. I that's one of the ones I guess I don't really ass also. I don't really care about that one. I guess it's just the because because you can't work out and get bigger boobs. So I understand True. people that want True. bigger boobs and get 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 the get the breast uh, uh, breast augmentation. But the one thing that I don't get is the butt and the thighs one because mm -hmm. you could build that, yeah. you could work yeah. out and sure. you could fix sure. that and make that to the way it's supposed to be. But instead, they want to skip a step. Oh, because they don't want to put the work about. in. And skip that's and the ones that well, kill me is the uh is the butt cheeks that don't match the thigh Th that's how you could tell a fake ass is you look at the oh, butt yeah. cheek to thigh ratio because as somebody who likes thicker women you could always tell the bttr the bbl by the bbtr the yeah. The, by the the, yeah the the butt to thigh ratio yeah <laughs> it's scientific it really sure, is sure sure we've we've come up with a term but it is scientific <laughs> uh in the name in the in the immortal words of creed bratton of the office swing low sweet chariot and uh chantel <laughs> said that that is correct there is definitely a correlation uh, between butt and thigh well, ratio look at, for look fake, at what's going on with ozempic now uh did you see the face the have faces, you seen some of the, the horse faces yeah the ozempic face yeah. well your butt falls off your face goes long and all in the name it burns all, all your fat all in the name of losing weight and nobody had really tested this crap that's the amazing part to yeah. me that the people are the one who suffer because they want it now 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 but don't we have to come back on like the 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 pharmaceutical companies and the doctors? Oh, it burns. They fat. never get in trouble for this stuff. Well, they don't have to get in trouble. Ugh. for it. Well, it's funny that it's uh, gross. I always think it's funny when they release a medicine like Ozempic, for example. They release it for oh, this is for diabetics to help regulate blood sugar yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. And then the next thing you know, oh well, there's this other side effect where you well, lose a fuck ton of weight. It was so for it goes through Hollywood like crazy because everybody's shooting it in their bellies. And the thing is, is there's people that actually have like medical conditions that require Ozempic yeah. for their yeah. diabetes. Sure, sure. And they can't get it. The price has yeah. been shot through the yeah. roof because of the cosmetic side of and things. And that's what I'm so. saying. The the doctors and the pharmaceutical companies are the one who ought to be held responsible for something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, for sure. The okay. doctors that are prescribing it for weight loss purposes. It's yeah, for sure. It's ridiculous. Uh, okay. They so could just go buy meth. It would be a lot cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> doctor says. Oh, did you see that? That was crazy. No. That was a big old, big old deal of lightning. Big I, old lightning. I bet you Kaboom. if we were up here on Friday, we would have seen the tornado that happened out I in China we Spring. Have, yeah. We probably would have seen that. Yeah. I might have to start coming up here on weather oh, alert bad days. weather days. Yeah, and sitting up here. Yeah, this is the place where I want to be when it's bad weather. Yeah. Uh, the doctor says, you suffer from a disease called dun, 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 diminished gluteal, gluteal syndrome. syndrome, or DGS. Uh, Hank says, I don't understand. He goes, what does that mean? Mr. Uh, Hill, you have no ass. You <laughs> have no ass. And with that, we'll take our first commercial break, and we'll be right back. Pew. Snack Attack is a podcast about the history of your favorite snacks, candies, and treats. Each five-minute or less episode features the history of a great snack from around the world. We'll also visit what the status of the snack is today and give you a little knowledge to lord over your friend. Snack Attack is available anywhere you get your podcast or at RogueMediaNetwork.com. Let's get snacking! Step into the unexpected with Cultastic, or How to Start a Cult Without Really Trying. A podcast where cult creation unfolds in the most unpredictable way. Join us on a unique journey into the world of theoretical cult formation. Unlike any other podcast, each episode of Cultastic is co-written in part using ChatGPT, and we let it decide our fate, good or bad. What makes Cultastic truly intriguing? We don't know what's coming each week. Together with our AI co-author, we'll discover and build this cult, one episode at a time, exploring various aspects of cult dynamics, leadership, and group psychology. 
delve into themes of charisma, influence, and the power of group thinking. It's a blend of expert analysis, theoretical exploration, and the unforeseen twists of AI-generated ideas. Remember, Cultastic is an exercise in imagination and education where we weave a narrative one episode and one tenant at a time. Curious about where this journey will take us? Subscribe to Cultastic or How to Start a Cult without really trying on your favourite podcast platform or at roguemedianetwork.com. Let's build this mission to save the people of Earth week by unpredictable week. All right, and we are back. Uh, we have ascertained, uh, no pun intended, that Hank has no ass. He has no ass. To uh, tame. That's, a, that's actually a, a meme of the show. Oh, like, yeah. It's like a top five, like, well, <laughs> when he When they finally topic. show his ass, it lo- <laughs> it's like this little, it's like a little duck face or something. It's just a little It reminds me face. of, like, somebody's chin with a dimple in it. That's mm-hmm. what it looks like. Mm-hmm. It looks like a dimpled chin. Or there's a uh, there's like a little Japanese cartoon character of a boy who has lips that look like that. That's what it always kind of reminds <laughs> me of. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so we're back, uh, still in the doctor's office. Hank says, "Diminished gluteal syndrome. How could this happen to me?" The doctor says, "Let me show you something." Gina, the chart, and from behind the door, you hear, "Just a moment, doctor." He goes, "I'll do it myself." So again, there's some sort of something <laughs> going on with this nurse and this doctor that's never explained. And I find that hilarious, honestly. He's like, uh, Gina, give me the chart. She goes, eh, just a second. He goes, oh, I'll do it myself. I mean, it's just, they were flirting a <laughs> while ago, and now they're pissed off at each other. The doctor continues and says, uh, this drawing shows a healthy gluteus maximus. And he's showing, like, two figures of a man, right? One man is in yep. perfect shape. The other guy's got a big pot belly. He goes, you have this body type, pointing to the pot belly one. He goes, it's actually quite common in the suburbs. A white male with small buttocks and protruding belly, often caused by pronounced consumption of beer. Hank says, uh, my rear end isn't as flat as that, guys. He looks at the doctor, looks at Peggy. There are zero words exchanged, and he understands. Ah, oh, shit, I guess it is. Doctor says, I'm going to prescribe a gluteal orthotic device. It's a prosthetic you wear over your backside to help alleviate the pressure on your spine. I like that. I, I really, uh, I really hate the word, but I think it's funny to hear sometimes. Uh-huh. Heine. Hank says, yeah. you want me to wear a fake Heine? He uh, goes, it's just such a cringe word. He goes, Mr. Hill, are your shoes fake feet? He's got a point. I mean, that is a good comparison. Yeah. Uh, all right, so now we're at Sobin, S-O-B-I-N, Medical Supply. Sobin, Sobin. Yeah, something, that, something like They've that. They've come to get their fake ass. Uh, the guy at the store comes out and says, this is your gluteal orthotic. Let's see. You wear it under your pants, and well, that's about it. Uh, let's see how she fits. And then he puts these two little bags in, and he goes, these two bags are filled with saline. Dr. Tate has prescribed 1,700 milliliters for your left cheek and 1,500 for your right. Hank goes into a curtain. He's going to try it on. Peggy from outside, being the ever ass she is. Isn't that interesting, Hank? You have one butt cheek bigger than the other, just like my feet. I mean, of course automatically makes it about herself instantly yeah Hank's, shitty peggy added it again <laughs> hank from behind the curtains are you yeah we were made for each other she goes and she's talking to the guy in the store now i wear a 16 and a half on my left foot and a 16 on my right how's that feel hank uh he comes out and goes uh pretty good i guess i uh, can i tell you uh can you uh he asks, can you tell I've got something on back there? She goes, oh, no, not at all. I mean, you can because his ass is huge at this point, right? They both look yeah, at each he's, other. Yeah, uh, he went from uh, nothing, uh, a long back to Kim Kardashian yeah, in like right. 3.5 seconds. So uh, she says, no, 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 not at all. So they go to leave. He's got uh, a lot of, what, what had that song go? A lot of lumps. Junk in the trunk. I got lumps. He's got uh, lumps. He's that, got his uh, Black Eyed Peas song, I think it was. He's got his lovely hanky lumps them lovely lady lumps <laughs> uh i think hunks are different uh so uh, yeah. they they go they go to leave they're walking through there and because of his big butt 
Uh, he knocks over a whole display of, of walking canes, and then he turns to pick those up and almost knocks the glasses over. It would have been a perfect. He can't control uh, his ass. It would have been a perfect. Uh, uh, licensing to have uh sir mix a lot i like big oh, yeah. butts and i cannot Absolutely. lie and it's just hank swinging his ass <laughs> just through the store knocking everything over <laughs> so peggy kind of catches the glasses display and as that happens a guy walks up and he says excuse me uh i noticed uh are you a patient of dr tate hank of course says no peggy of course says yes he goes oh me too my name's dave dave ulster hank says hank hank uh grill yeah, that's real. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's really funny. good. Uh, Chantel here, or uh, we got two people. Armadillo <laughs> grows, and Chantel Armadillo grows says went from God dang it to God dang it, <laughs> and then uh, uh, Chantel said too bad Hank didn't have that fat ass when Miss Liz made him wear those booty shorts. Oh boy, that's true. Ooh, that's that's scandalous. That's true. There. Good yeah. job. Nice <laughs> that's pull. Scandalous. Uh, he goes Hank uh, Hank Grill. The guy says, it can be tough in the beginning, you know. Uh, you know, if you ever need to talk or anything, give me a call. Hands him a card. Hank says, well, thank you, but this is a personal problem that I am fully capable of handling on my own. And Peggy says, well, uh, Mr. D. Ulster at AOL.com, get ready for Peggy Hill's joke of the day. Ass. Yeah. Uh, all right, now we're in uh, Hank's garage. It's nighttime. He closes the garage door. He looks at the mower. He gets on it with his fake ass on. And it actually feels good. And he says, well, I'll be dipped, which is a wonderful Texas-type expression. Yep. Uh, now we're outside with Bobby and a stopwatch. Bobby is timing his dad on the mower. Uh, he goes, come on, Dad, pedal to the metal. Hands him a cup of water as he comes by very slowly. He goes, take small sips, don't gulp. Hank has a uh, helmet on. He has yellow goggles on. I mean, these guys are ready to go. Yeah, they're moving. He says, I'm mowing like I'm back in high school. So <laughs> I don't know what the hell that he means. I don't get that one at all. I'm mowing like a bag. Of, I don't get that one. That's a that's a line I cannot relate to. I absolutely hated mowing. Mowing was too, a chore. Man. We didn't I broke get several I, like, mowers. Did I ever get to use the riding mower? No, I had to push mow. Yeah. So the riding mower was there. It was an option, but it wasn't an option for me. It was a non-option. Growing up, we had a push mower. Um, One of those ones that rolled like that or like yeah. a pull start? No, a pull start. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I I had one of the ones that oh, went the like that ones. and a pull start. Oh, yeah. But uh, like I said, my dad's dad was born in 1912, and he was born in 1960, so I didn't get like the traditional millennial upbringing oh, i sure. grew up like yeah. a boomer <laughs> like a swamp cooler you know Absolutely. you had to go out and put water on the swamp cooler you had to mow oh, with all these my old grandparents implements. had a swamp cooler they yeah. were the worst thing in the world oh, you know i'd awful. rather be hot than be hot well, and be, wet well, it's just it's just so humid yeah i didn't like and that then either squirrels get in it and all kinds of shit yeah, happens yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't i great. hate them a swamp cooler suck if you don't know what a swamp cooler is look it up they're it's, big too it's awful they were big yeah, big gigantic, contraption gigantic uh okay so now uh we're in the hill bedroom and bathroom hank comes out in a towel he's just gotten out of the shower uh peggy comes through he goes have you seen my orthotic i need it for dinner my dad's gonna be here in 10 minutes shit you know if cotton's coming this is gonna get get worse she goes, uh, I was doing a load of support garments, support garments. So I went ahead and threw it in. I hung it on the line to dry. He goes, it's a dry on flat surface only. Don't you read the tags? He goes out the sliding glass. He's still, by the way, only in a towel. Uh, and he looks for it. And on the line, by the way, are what I can only assume a, a big pair of Spanx that Peggy has. I don't yeah. know if Spanx were a thing yet, but yeah, it's something I, like that. I imagine there was some type it's of. Spanx uh, or a girdle. Uh, Some but type of elastic she said material. She, she said she did do a load of support garments, though. And so I'm assuming there's Spanx, and I, I, I believe there's a, uh, a jock strap hanging up there as well. I never understood the Spanx thing either. Let's like, just keep it all in. Well, yeah, but I mean, when you're on the, it's a different way to lie. When you're on <laughs> the dating, when you're on the dating scene or whatever, and you're out there yeah. putting yourself yeah. out there, you got to put yourself out there as you are. Well, you would think not, not at like. Like, if you want to go to dinner with your wife and she wants to wear all these support things, that's but, one thing. But while you're out in the dating world, you can't, like, lie about everything oh. that you are. You're not <laughs> yeah, supposed you to. You can. <laughs> it's 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 disingenuous. I mean, it's, but, oh, sure. I don't think people care about genuine. 
Uh, but it would uh, be like if a, a man like wore a sock in his pants when he went out on a first date, yeah, just to have a, yeah. a massive bulge or, or something, say, you know, like that. You pull it out and it's like an inch long. You know let's what I mean? Say like, you were part of a big rock band and you wrapped a cucumber in tinfoil <laughs> and stuck yeah, it down your pants. Yeah, that kind of thing. You know. Uh, but yeah, people bitch about the fact that people use uh, pictures of other people on their profiles all the time. Arthur you know? said fifty pounds of meat in a ten pound <laughs> bag, <laughs> and then Chantel yeah, said, "Mind right. your business, Rusty." <laughs> <laughs> so he looks on the on the line he doesn't see it uh and he hears from the side dale saying over here hank behind you and he's just shaking that fake ass because he's got it over his pants uh hank says you give that back before i kick your ass D- uh, bill says don't you mean before you kick your ass i mean they think this is the funniest <laughs> thing ever that is pretty funny he says a that joke. is a medical device prescribed by an orthopedic surgeon and then at that moment, of course, the worst moment possible, Cotton drives up in his Cadillac car with uh, Dee Dee and G.H. Oh, no. Cotton gets out immediately and goes, I'm here. Where's the steak? Uh, Hank hollers over to him and says, Dad, go in the house. I'll be right in. Uh, of course, Dale, again, worst friend. Colonel, you saved me a phone call. He's the worst friend <laughs> ever. He is. He's a terrible friend. Colonel, you saved me a phone call. I regret to inform you that your son is wearing saline implants, i.e. falsies on his rump. And he hands the whole thing to Cotton. Cotton says, dear God, Hank, you're wearing butt boobies. He goes, it's not for my buttocks. It's for my back. There's this uh, (laughs) uh, funny guy that I found on uh, social media. His name is Dalton Pruitt. And uh, it's really funny what he does. He... uh, he he does it for men too, so you can't say he's misogynistic. But he does these uh, videos of celebrities' breasts, and uh, he, it's he calls himself uh, the uh, oh, I don't know. Just it, there's all kinds of st- it, it's it's like ratings where he rates them or whatever, and he talks about them, and it's like a six minute video essay. Well, there's a ton of uh, like only fan girls out there. I, I guess girls, maybe guys too, that you have to pay them and they'll rate your dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the weirdest service. Yeah, that is a weird service. It's a weird uh, service. But this guy or whatever, he Rake just he, he just does it for social media content. He's like a, a budding, like he's he's in the process of wanting to be a comedian. Yeah. And uh, these people get paid for this. Yeah, it reminded insanity. me of that. I don't know. It's me. hilarious. Yeah. Rate my wiener. Dalton Pruitt is his name. He's funny. Go Dalton. Uh, okay, so he goes, uh, uh, dear God, Hank, you're wearing butt boobies. It's not for my buttocks. It's for my back. Dee Dee, come over here. Put your fake tie ties next to Hanks. We'll see who's got the bigger melons. Oh, gross. Uh, Hank says, oh, all right, that tears it. Uh, and then they start playing keep away with Hank's prosthetic ass, uh, just tossing it from one to the other. Uh, he goes, Dad, you give that to me right now. And uh, passes it over to Dale. Dale says, keep away from Hank. Uh, Con up over the fence says, pop down, hillbillies. Uh, and then you have uh, Cotton saying, we're having a game of keep away here, Mr. Khan. And then uh, Dale says, catch. He throws it really high. And just like that one sneaker that you see, it wraps itself around the power line yep. up mm. in the air. And it just hangs there. Man. Hank goes over to get a stick to knock it down. He reaches up too far. The towel falls. He's completely naked with his tiny little ass. And uh, everybody just starts laughing. It is... it. It is the worst that I've seen yet of them making fun of Hank. I mean, it is. this is rough here. This is literally just bullying. You know, when you're playing keep away over somebody's head with their fake ass, <laughs> I think that's bullying. That's bullying. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty rough. <clears throat> to bully okay. Hank is pretty tough, too. It is. It's hard, yeah. Uh, so we see the uh, – it, it transitions to later. We see the ass still up on the power line. Uh, Dale is on his mower and he says, what information have you brought for me, Octavio? Octavio comes up and goes, Bill is losing weight, F.A. He's uh, eating only oranges and ham sandwiches. How are you losing weight eating oranges and uh, ham I don't know. sandwiches? Uh, well, goes, compared to what he used to eat, if oh, that's yeah, all so. he's eating is oranges that's and a true. ham sandwich, that's he true. might he might lose But how weight. do you come to that as your as your menu? Oranges and ham sandwiches. In his head, that's healthy. Oh, yeah, that's I don't healthy. know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> he says, uh, blast it. Well, we'll still win, but we must train twice as hard. Octavio, release the chicken. Octavio goes <laughs> over and releases a chicken out of a cage, and Dale basically is trying to run over the damn chicken with his mower. He's like, oh, so that's the way it is, and he's just chasing this damn chicken around with his freaking mower, which is insanity. Uh, Hank is... 
<coughs> excuse me, Hank is in there watching from inside. Peggy's speaking to him. Goes, Hank, do not just stand there watching Dale mow a chicken. Get your che- <laughs> mow a chicken. Get your cheeks down off that line and get yourself back in the race. He goes, no, I'm done with mower racing, and I'll tell you something else. I'm ripping up the grass and putting in wood chips. You know how I always hated having a lawn. What? Yeah, he's just giving up, and Peggy looks super worried. Uh, all right, next, we are uh, at uh, – so we you see Hank go out and get the mail. He drops some of it on the ground. He can't bend over to pick it up because it hurts too much. Peggy pops out of the door and says, Hank, Mr. Strickland just called. There's a propane emergency out in McMainerberry. Hank says, McMainerberry? When will they learn? Like, it happens like all the time. Like it happens all the time, yeah. Like, yeah. it's an often thing. <laughs> Peggy beats him to the truck because Hank is just barely getting over there. She goes, no, 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 hop in. With your bad back, I'll drive. He literally just gets up in the bed of the truck and lays down, and then she drives off, which yeah, that's, is that's, <laughs> nuts. That's crazy, yeah. So they pull up to this place that says TV and VCR repair. <coughs> which for the children out there, VCR means video cassette recorder. It's the way we used to record TV. Uh, a TV, On a video home system. A TV yeah. is a big appliance in your in your room that or in your in your house that plays movies. They still have TVs. I know. <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, it is right next to Lenny's Laundry there in the uh, in the strip center. Uh, Hank goes in. He goes, "Hello, Hank Hill, Strickland Propane." There's nobody in the TV VCR repair. He hears, uh, or he says, do not do not light any matches. And then from behind the door in the back, he hears, we're back here, Hank. Hank goes in the back. He sees four guys sitting in folding chairs. He goes, remember me, Hank? Dave Ulster from the medical supply shop. You're among friends. All of us suffer from diminished gluteal syndrome. Hank says, uh, but Peggy said there was a propane. Oh, no. And he looks out the window. Got Peggy him. is peeling out in that damn truck. She dropped him off at No Ass Anonymous. She, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she did. NAA. Uh, another one talks and says, uh, uh, he says all of us suffered from this. And he, he he sees Peggy peel out and he goes, Hank, my name is Wayne. I've been wearing for four years. Phil, six and a half years. I'm Larry. I've worn a prosthetic behind for 18 months. And he does say behind, not behind, behind. Uh, Hank says, oh, God, this is a support group. Then one of them speaks up and goes, we're not a support group. We're hobbyists. We share a similar interest, hobbyists. and we meet twice a month to talk about no it. Ass, ass hobbyists. I uh, goes, oh, I can't believe this is happening to me. Your wife told me about your awful incident with your orthotic. I shared it with the group. Jeez. This is, this is Hank's nightmare at this point. This he is goes, Peggy overstepping her boundaries oh, for sure. yeah. He goes, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not even confirming that I have a wife. <laughs> the guy, guy says, it's one thing when they call us names, but to play hot potato with your unit? For God's sakes, it's a medical device. Your goes, unit. Yeah. Yeah. Hank says, well, that's what I kept saying. The guy says, those cruel sons of britches. I love that, by the way. Cruel sons, sons of, of britches. britches. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, he goes, Some did you good get, ass humor. <laughs> he goes, did you get their names? He goes, oh, I know their names. They were my neighbors and my best friends. And my dad. <laughs> and my Jesus, dad. What a list. That's rough. He and needs a support group. <laughs> he does. The other guy says, uh, Hank, none of what's said here leaves the group. So anybody, uh, and so they all sit down. He goes, so anybody sit anywhere good this week? <laughs> anybody sit anywhere good this week? He goes, uh, one of the guys says, guess which assistant coach sat on his son's Little League bench. The other guy's nice. That's great. Hank is surprised because he can identify with these guys. This well, because they're all like him. They're all just – that's the thing with Hank is if you get Hank in a room with a bunch of blue-collar, similar oh, yeah. guys like him, he's all right. But, uh, again, this is one of those things where he was afraid to uh, afraid to be different. Walking around with a prosthetic <laughs> ass is not something, you know, <laughs> Hank Hill wants to have to deal with. No, no, I don't think it does. And, uh, and he dealt with it in uh, a really rough way because his friends and everything aren't very supportive of oh, stuff. Man, Imagine if he father. said he had lung cancer. Well, what would they do? Yeah. Like blow smoke in yeah. his face <laughs> and <laughs> you got burn cancer. fires in his front yard Probably. or something? Like what would I they think, do to cause problems for I, him then? You don't doubt that Cotton would do that. He'd, There's no doubt. He'd start smoking no cigars yeah. in his face. Yeah, probably. You just got to get more smoke in you. Yeah, you need more smoke. <laughs> smoke out the cancer. Yeah. So he's uh, he's super surprised that he's starting to identify with these guys. Now it's nighttime at Hank's house. He he goes over with a fishing pole and gets his ass down off the line, which I thought was pretty smart, honestly. that It was a lot smarter good, than the original stick idea. Well, yeah, but you got to be a good fisherman to do it also because it gotta is be really good. You know? got to so, be really good. Uh, now it's morning. We're in the hill kitchen. Hank's you know what? You can't even be called a fisherman. You have to be called an angler to get something angler. like that down. That's all right. Yeah. That's right. An ass angler. 
Uh, it's morning. It's in the <laughs> Hill Kitchen. Hank's pouring some coffee. Uh, Peggy comes in. And she goes, Peggy, you better sit down. I have something to show you. She sits down, and she's shocked uh, because Hank sits down. He goes, that's right. I'm sitting. And I owe it all to that hobbyist group. The one person who put me in touch with them, and Peggy thinks that's her. He goes, Dave Ulster. He goes, ah, I'm just kidding you, Peggy. See, I got my sense of humor back. She goes, oh, Hank, it is so good to laugh again. <laughs> What's it been, like two days? <laughs> Probably ten years. But, uh. <laughs> Hank says, but on a serious note, Peggy, don't ever report a false propane emergency again. This might be the shittiest thing that shitty Peggy has ever said. Believe me, I prayed on it, Hank, and God said to me, don't do it. But you know what? I knew better. <laughs> what the fuck? All right, Peggy. I was not going to rest rough. until you were back in that moment. Yeah, race. I already put that one in his notes, oh. even. That's how rough that one was. Shitty <laughs> God Peggy. God said to me, don't do yeah. it. But you know what? I knew better. He goes, the race, uh, I'm done with that nonsense. I'll wear my orthotic at home and at my desk at work, but I'm not going to give it to my so-called friends and family an opportunity to ridicule me in public. So the next thing we see is uh, Hank walks into the living room. Bobby is on the ground doing aerobics. Yep. He's got like jazzercise shit on. He's, he's got yeah, leg he's, warmers, a headband, the whole thing. He looks like uh, one of them 80s workout videos. He does. Yeah, yeah, yeah jazzercise. <laughs> Uh, but on the TV, you hear Suzanne Summers because it literally said it in the thing. This is Suzanne Summers talking. Squeeze your butt and release your butt and walk on your butt and left cheek, right cheek. Is she somebody <laughs> that used to produce those or something? Suzanne Summers did the thigh master. So oh. she had this appliance that was kind yeah. of V-shaped. And you oh, put it between your legs master. and you go. Arr, arr. Also known as Suzanne the Summers. buns of steel. Yes. Well, yeah, yeah. But yeah, Suzanne Summers was definitely on TV all the time. Talking about uh, oh, and then uh, Arthur Madison butt. added in Jane Fonda and Denise Austin. That's true. Those they are were two others, big ones yeah. in that. But that Suzanne industry. Summers is the one who had that like that first piece of junk that was made in yeah. China or something, and you're supposed to squeeze it. And I didn't know that Jane that Fonda shit. was ever uh, noted for anything other than pissing on the American flag and oh, being no, dude. related to Ooh. one of the best uh, actors of his era in the '80s. Uh, she, she was, was big. she was Ms. Um, like workout. So what they do? They forgave her for pissing and oh yeah, Jane Fonda workout tape. I can tell you was one of the highest didn't selling she and go renting to North tapes Vietnam? ever. She did. Isn't that what it was? Yeah. She went to she actual went to North Vietnam, Vietnam yeah. mm-hmm. and pissed on the American yeah. flag in front of the North Vietnamese. Yeah, she's not yeah. a great person, but she That's was also crazy. married to Ted Turner. It doesn't matter. She was a babe. Yeah, uh, you're right. You're right, Chantel. She was a babe. <laughs> so uh, walk on your butt, left cheek, right cheek. Hank comes in and goes, Bobby, that's a lady's tape. What are you doing? <laughs> and he turns off the TV. Bobby says, I'm firm in my buttocks 30, in 30 days or so. I uh, don't end up like you. You know how much I like to sit. Uh, that's a great argument, Bobby. He goes, don't worry, son. You probably won't get DGS. But even if you do, you can wear a gluteal orthotic and sit anywhere you want. Bobby says, yeah, but sooner or later someone will find out and they'll laugh. And I, w- I don't want people laughing at me. Uh, I want them laughing at me because I'm shoving broccoli up my nose, not because there's something wrong with me. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny because he gets to turn the table on his dad because yep. his dad is yep. always assuming there's something wrong with That's him. exactly yeah. right. Uh, he just turns the TV back on. We hear Suzanne Summers, left cheek, right cheek. All right, so we're back at the TV VCR repair shop uh, in the back for the uh, support group or, as Hank likes to call it, the hobbyist group. Um, and so one of the guys says, so, Hank, I see you're sitting this week. He goes, yes, I am. But I'd like to stand up for what I'm about to say. I want to thank you all for giving me the courage to wear my orthotic with pride. And dang it, I'm not just doing it for me. I'm doing it for my son because chances are I passed this debilitating condition on to him. Debilitating. And debilitating. There is, humiliating. <laughs> and there is one thing I can do to help my son lead a happy, shame-free life, and that's to win the Durndal County Lawnmower Race. And everybody's like, all right, Hank, there way to go. go, way to go, way to go. I knew y'all would be on board. I'm going to need an ace pitch crew, and I'm looking at one right now. We're an unbeatable team. The diminished glutes. The guys just kind of look at each other. He goes, we'll wear it on our hats, on our jackets. Heck, I'll paint it on my mower right on top of the factory coat. One of the guys, there's there's a lot of silence. One of the guys goes, you do that, we'll throw a brick through your window. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <That's rough. laughs> oh, yeah, you got tables of turn. <laughs> Hank says, "What? Uh, the, I, I thought we were an unbeatable team. He goes, take a, hey, take a seat, Hank. We're a secret society, not a group of look-at-me Stanleys. I don't know <laughs> what that means other than flat Stanley. Hank says, well, fine. If that's the way it is, I'll do it on my own. He sits down. The guy just goes, thank you, Hank. Any other new business? And, I mean, that's it. It's over. 
All right, and that's the second commercial break. We'll take that, and we'll come back and find out all about the uh, Durndal lawnmower races and Hank's tiny little ass. <laughs> Ned Hillsdale, a hard-drinking, foul-mouthed ex-cop, turned private detective in the city of Chicago. He lives dangerously, loves intensely, and drinks harder than anyone. The very things that got him kicked off the force now make him the city's best detective. Set against the low rumble of sad jazz and the hum of underground crime, Ned Hillsdale... Private Detective is available anywhere you get your podcasts and at roguemedianetwork.com. Hey everybody, I'm Tony and some call me Big T. And I'm Carrie, and we have some exciting news. We have a podcast. Absolutely. It's called My Husband is a Hunk of Hunk of Burning Love. No. And we'll be discussing some different sex positions overweight couples can no, easily man. perform. Correct? I don't think so. It's called I Married an Idiot. I know. I'm just kidding. We'll try to stay on task. Focus. Did you take your Adderall today? <laughs> really? You're going to ask me that? Are you insinuating something? Never mind. You may be wondering why we're doing this. We have been together for 36 years. 36 short, long, long years. freaking years. But we must be doing something right, right? Well, we must be. But this is where the fun starts. And you know me, I love having fun. Fun is the best thing to have. Yes, it is. On our show, we're going to be discussing a wide variety of topics. And I'll give you my opinion, and you'll give your opinion. So please... Do not embarrass me. I'm not going to embarrass you. I told you a thousand times, but you also need to learn to get some thicker skin if you're going to be doing this, no. and don't take everything so damn personal. I know, but you get personal. Anyway, it's up to you, not you, Carrie, but the, the podcast the, listeners, the audience. the audience, to decide which one of us is the idiot. It's going to be pretty obvious, trust me. Absolutely, totally obvious. Was that a shot? Of course not. Okay, good. Just checking. So... You know, everybody has an opinion. It's like my daddy always said. Oh, no. Here we go. Well, it's true. It's, it, an opinion is like an ass. Everyone has one, and some are bigger than others, or it went something like that. Stop. Would you be nice? See what I mean? Tell them where we can be found. Anywhere you get your podcast or roguemedianetwork.com. Just look up I Married an Idiot. Sit back, relax, and give us a try. I promise you it would be entertaining. And if you want to contact us, you can shoot us an email well, I don't seem to have the email at the moment. Um, you, oh, no. this, uh, well, mm, this is not good. I don't seem to have that at the moment, but we'll let you know, so stay tuned, and I promise you we'll let you know. Sorry. Really? Well. But yes, eventually we'd love to hear your feedback. You can give us suggestions on what topic to cover, comment on our show or an episode, or just drop us a line to say hello. Just remember, any negative feedback should be directed toward Carrie, and all positive no. feedback should go to me. Wrong, wrong again. Hey, babe, look, we got to go. Let's wrap this up. Okay, just remember to tune in. It's going to be fun, and thanks for giving us a try. Absolutely. Until next time, peace out. God dang. I, Boy, I that, thought it went pretty good. That went well, not. I, well, I thought it went okay. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me the email? I, do you do we even have an email? You said you were getting the email. I did not. When did I say that? You're such an idiot. Oh, the hell with it. All right, and we are back. Uh, we are in the uh, hill driveway. Bobby is helping Hank spray paint on the mower the words diminished gluteal or yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, diminished glute, whatever. Gluteal. Uh, yeah, and, and diminished glutes. Uh, and Peggy comes out and goes, Hank, uh, painting diminished glutes on your mower might be asking for trouble. What about my suggestion to paint the mow the merrier? She thinks that is the funniest thing she's ever come up with. Hank says, I, I suffer from a genetic condition called DGS. She goes, I'm sorry, Hank. It's just that I don't know what it's like. And he goes, obviously, and she snaps her fingers when she says this, yeah. I have got it going on back there. So... We got Peggy, who talks to God and tells him, nah, never mind. And then you've got Peggy talking to her husband about something that's hurting him, and she goes, well, I, I don't have that problem. I got it going on back there. What <laughs> a turd. Uh, Hank says, God forbid in 20 years Bobby gets it. I don't want him to feel like a freak. I'm fighting now so he doesn't have to. And Bobby goes, race for the cure. <laughs> 
you're going to cure his tiny ass. <laughs> Which uh, I was reading somewhere about the Susan Komen Foundation that the the money is not you know, is <laughs> yeah kind of funky you, when you start looking into those things it, you're going to be sorely disappointed yeah. because the money does not go where they say it goes. I mean, it's good to raise awareness and, for oh, stuff but well the, the money's got to go to the right place here's the here's the thing right um do you know what cancer is you heard of cancer before yeah I'm, yeah i'm aware of cancer. i think everybody's heard of cancer uh i think the awareness part is over i think you need to put money towards cure no, for sure. And so yeah, a lot yeah. of the time you see these pink ribbons and all that stuff, and it, it always says for breast cancer awareness. That's not what you give your money to. You know what I think give all those corporations. Give it to a place that's actually doing research. You know what I think all those nonprofits are? Yeah. They're like uh, oh, limbs dude. of the lobby for that. They're just li- they're just a part of the lobby for pharmaceuticals even... and stuff. Because I feel like with all the money that goes into it, uh, maybe if they haven't found a cure, they have, have to found some type of better way to manage some yeah, of these cancers and so. stuff like yeah. that but it just seems like uh and, and i'm not saying that doctors are a part of this apparatus because it's uh i think it's asinine to think that a doctor doesn't want people to get well healthy that's a whole part of their deal but i think the corporation side and the business side of it like the hospital business itself i think they don't want that to happen they, like, I, th- I think there's a companies th- and hospital businesses like because a doctor is like a, a doctor to me is not uh he's just a uh, a peon compared to the mm. business model that's on t- that he that, that's on top of him there is a lot more money in keeping you having cancer and living than there is curing your cancer yeah because if I'll they if, 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 if they do all the 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 medical care and keep you alive and all this you know all the stuff to keep you uh keep you from dying then it, the amount that it costs is insane before we uh, actually i'll tell this story on friday on our friday episode because i, I just it's it's baffling me but uh, and it, it really has nothing to do with what we're talking about here, other than uh, lobbyists and and government agencies and things like that. Remind me on Friday to tell you about the article I read about San Francisco. Okay. Yeah, I got you. I yeah. Got you. All right. So we are at the Durndal uh, County Speedway. Uh, Bobby and Hank are getting everything ready. We hear the PA announcer. Good afternoon, the United States Lawnmower Racing Association. Welcome you to the Durndal County Speedway. Our day begins with the lightning speed of the drag races. And then they show these drag races. And <laughs> these guys, rum, 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 and then they go out at like two miles an hour <laughs> or whatever it is, you know, and they're racing each other. And yep. then they get to the end of it, and both their shoots come out, shoots on a riding lawnmower. It doesn't slow them down at all. They just keep going the same speed. I thought that was a pretty funny sight gag. They don't rip out, yeah. Uh, All right, so uh, Hank says, uh, look at Dale over there all smug on his Mason 5000. You're going to eat my exhaust fumes, Gribble. He yells it over to Dale and Octavio. Dale says, keep talking, bubble butt. And (laughs) then you see uh, Bill over there. He goes, I wasn't saying anything. Not you. I was talking to Hank. I'm going to mow laps around both of you. (coughs) <coughs> and again, he's got Octavia over there with him. A uh, little time passes. We hear the PA announcer say, Stock class racers, mount your mowers. The race will begin in one minute. Uh, and you've got them all lining up for the race. The the one that, that floors me is Boomhauer, and he's dressed up like Evil Knievel yeah, <laughs> on, yeah. his, on his lawnmower. We hear Dale say, All right, Octavio, now that the inspection is over, hook up the nitrous oxide to my engine. Octavio says, That's illegal, no? He goes, yes, but it'll give me the boost of speed. Add that to the natural quickness of the Mason 5000, and I just might overcome my weak driving skills. <laughs> At least he knows his limits, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess that's a good thing. Uh, then the PA again. Racers, start your engines. And ready, set, a mo. And there's a flag girl that puts the thing down. Everybody takes off. Bill moves about three inches, and then the whole thing falls over. Uh, he looks up and goes, I did better than I thought I would. Uh, and then the other, they, they start on the race, right? And, uh, they're all like moving neck and neck. Hank comes up to one of the racers and he goes, don't you clip my wheels, you little tush. The the other racer says that to him. He goes, say that again to the back of my head, Mr. Non U.S. Lawnmower Association approved helmet. Boy, Hank is quick on the uptake there, isn't he? He's quick on those, he's quick at firing back at Real people. quick, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Non-U.S. Lawnmower Association approved helmet. Because he had the Army helmet on, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so you see Bobby and Peggy over there cheering. Uh, as they come around the curve, 
there's a man over there and he's got a radar gun and he clocks them at nine miles an hour, which I guess is about what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah. But then he spits and apparently he's still got the radar gun on and the radar gun reads 17 miles an hour. So he can spit faster than the guys are the going guys are moving, the lawnmowers, yeah. which I thought was funny. Uh, you hear from the PA, 10 laps down, 10 laps to mow. Uh, and then uh, there's, there's a girl, a card girl again. She holds up the lap 10 sign. Uh, Hank is coming around the corner, and you see pop. One of his saline packs in his ass uh, pops and starts leaking all over the place. Uh, you hear Peggy say, he blew out his left cheek. And Bobby says, no, that's his pivot cheek. Now he can't turn on the inside. So you see him trying to turn and turn, all that stuff. Uh, and... Uh, <laughs> Dale comes up beside him and goes, Hank, I just want to say I'm proud of you. May the best man win. And then he pulls out a fuck, uh, excuse me, pulls out a freaking pocket knife. Sorry for cussing, <laughs> brother. <laughs> and pops, yeah. pops his other ass cheek. This is a guy that needs to be punched in the face. I mean, yeah, that is, that that's, is rough. Uh, that's, like, that's like riding down, you know. This is his friend. The straights at Talladega and leaning over and popping somebody's tire. You of know, you your can't friend. Do that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there is no oh, friends in competition. My God. Uh, anyway, it pops, and the other cheek starts leaking all over the place. And he goes, oh, not the other one. My cheeks blew out. I'm riding on my tailbone. I don't think I can finish. <laughs> that, that's crazy. <laughs> my cheeks blew out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm riding on my tailbone. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, he starts pulling over uh, slowly. He, he jumps off and runs along the side of it. And uh, Bobby says, yes, you can. There's less than one lap to go. Gut it out cramp gut it out he falls down because he's exerting himself in any way so he gets a cramp and falls down yeah. uh hank says watch out i'm pulling off this track so he pulls over he falls off of it he looks into the sun and then it's like he's gonna pass out but he hears the guys in the background saying we're here no rear get used to it we're here no year get used to it and then one of them looks at Hank as Hank stands up and he goes, Hank, take my ass. And he throws two of the ass cheek saline implants at Hank. Hank catches them both, puts them in, gets back on his mower. Uh, and then uh, <laughs> they get, they start racing and racing. And it's like two seconds later, uh, Boomhauer crosses the line and, and the PA guy goes, and the winner of the first annual Durndall County Mower Race is Boomhauer. Uh, you see Dale. Dale says, damn, we lost, you worthless piece of junk, talking to his mower. But I can still beat Hank, and that's even better than winning. Come on, you graceful gazelle. And he turns on his nitrous. The engine immediately blows, starts starts blowing smoke at him. He goes, dang, I, cheating Octavia blew my engine. <coughs> no, Dale, you asked for that. Uh, and then you hear on the, uh, on the PA... Uh, Dale Gribble on the Mason 5000 because he crosses the line right before Hank does. <clears throat> and the PA guy says, Hank Hill on the diminished gluteal syndrome mower. What a battle for sixth place. Uh, and then uh, he comes in again, again. Like I say, he he finishes before Hank does. Uh, and Dale says, celebrate good time. Come on, sixth place. Everybody's just super sad. Uh, some time passes. So Hank got seventh place. Uh, <clears throat> the mower is on the back of Hank's truck. I guess somebody drove it up there for him, or he did it with his new ass. Uh, and the guys are all, the, the his new friends from the uh, club are all standing around. And uh, he says, well, I'm sorry I let you down, but not winning the race. Uh, and the guys say, Hank, what you did, it took a lot of guts. You got seventh place. That means you automatically qualify for next year's race. Uh, he goes, well, I, I appreciate what you guys did out there today, too. That also took a lot of guts, especially you, Larry. Larry says, we were all reaching for our bags, buddy. I was just quicker on the draw. He goes, all right, then. I guess I'll see you guys next Tuesday. He walks off, uh, or they all walk off. They all get in the same van and drive away. It's weird to see a lot of grown men get in a minivan together and drive away. It's odd, yeah. That's not uh, a, so that's Hank an unusual is, appearance. <laughs> Hank is standing there looking at the mower, <clears throat> and a guy walks up. He goes, hey, she's a beaut. What kind of engine? Briggs and Stratton? He goes, nope, Tecumseh. Tecumseh. Ten and a half horse under the hood. And the guy says, that padding, that thing you were wearing during the race, uh, I got a friend who could use something like that. Hank says, well, why don't you give your friend my card? And hands him a card. The guy walks off. Hank looks at his ass and goes, excuse me, uh, I think you could use it too. <laughs> like he doesn't get the fact that the guy's asking for his friend. 
And Peggy is already in the truck, so is Bobby. He goes, Peggy, to the medical supply store. I need some new cheeks. And then he lays down in the bed just like <laughs> Just like he did for first That's time. such an odd yeah, way and to get they, out of there. And they drive the off. It's yeah. so good. Uh, we get the credits. That's it. And then we hear, thank you, Gina. Dr. Tate. That's it. That's it. End right. of the episode. That's the end of the episode. That was Hank's Backstory, Season 5, Episode 19. The next episode five, finishes ABE Season 5. Really? The next one is the finish. 20? Yeah, yeah episode 20. It's 20 in this one, huh? Yeah. All right. Well, you heard it first, guys. Uh, this is uh, episode 20 coming up, so season five, episode 20. Yep. We will cover that next Monday. Kidney boy and hamster girl. While, I am, uh, while I'm still talking, I'm going to say uh, <laughs> thank you to everybody who's watching or listening or, or uh, just aware of us. Uh, we really do appreciate your support. and uh, Yeah, with you know, the, all of the combined uh, everything that we've had over the last month. Yeah. Uh, it's been a lot. We are now... Uh, added it up. I, I don't have the exact number. I can't remember it, but we're over fifteen thousand views yeah. over everything yeah. for this month. It's wonderful. For it's wonderful. Days. Well, yeah. we started getting pretty consistent about putting the audio versions up on YouTube and things like that. We changed it to a podcast there. Um, we're still doing all the audio stuff, all the video stuff. Yeah, fixing YouTube Just properly. Remember that. Uh, yeah, we got to. We got to. Uh, like organize all that yeah but remember you can catch us on spotify video or you can catch us on youtube for every monday episode we're going back to just audio on fridays i think because it's just too much work on mason and so uh until we do a special thing it'll just be video on mondays but also remember that we do have the patreon it's a three dollar thing a month uh if you can help us out we'd really appreciate it helps us buy uh candy for mason and uh shoes for uh mason's cat and so, uh, if you can help us out in any way, we'd appreciate it. Where else can they find us? Uh, you can find us on YouTube.com at B-W-A-A-A-K-O-T-H. I'd appreciate it if you went and liked and subscribed over there and checked us out and uh, went and commented on some stuff. I try to reply to all comments. So far, I've been it's been easy to do. Uh, there are some good ones, by yeah, the way. And I'm going to go good over them in our Friday episode. Good, so good. Uh, you can also find us at B-W-A-A-A-K-O-T-H dot com, or you can find us at RogueMediaNetwork.com slash B-W-A-A-A-K-O-T-H. And with that, we bid you adieu. adieu. And uh, thank you again for being here, and we'll see you on Friday. We matanye. We matanye. Indeed. <laughs> This has been a Rogue Media Network production.